So the Gemara brought down a brisa yesterday. The Gemara brought down a brisa yesterday that that was going to bring a riot to the Shiloh. Well, hopefully, you start with the Shiloh of Abshashis if an oral is mutter to eat miser or not. And the Gemara brought a riot from a brisa that was comparing and contrasting Truma and Bikurim and Miser. Is that? Are you sure? I'm making it different. I'm not sure. 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 i So the one of the halachas that the one of the halachas that the Bryce has said that we looked into was was that it's also for an oinen to eat meiser and to eat bikurim, and then the Gemara discussed the halacha of <coughs> truma that cannot be eaten when Truma that could be eaten, sorry, truma that you could destroy truma when it's tummy and have a gnaw from it, but you cannot do that for Meister and Bikurim. And we also said that if someone eats truma while they themselves are tummy, they're only also be a salava. I didn't, I didn't plug it in. Yeah. No, I heard that conversation with Hatsi yesterday. So, I mean, just wasn't cooked up enough yet. I don't think it's done. Okay, I'm sorry. Here I thought I was all, all, all efficient, but this good art. So the so the last thing we learned is that by truma, if someone eats the truma and the truma is tame, it's only an isralav. But if someone eats the miser, the bakurim, and the miser is tame, then it's going to be an iser. Uh, it's going to be an isralav. But if someone eats the truma when it's tame, then it's only an iser assay. That was the last thing that we learned, and we learned <coughs> that we know that. Because it says in the Pasuk, that's what it says by Psulah Hamikdoshim Shaniftu. Dafka that you can eat when it's tame, but you're not allowed to eat trumo when it's tame, which is Allah Haba Mahlala say. Now the way we learn that you can destroy truma, which we're going to go back to today, was from a halacha that Rabbo said in the name of Rabbi Yochanan at the bottom of Ayn Gimel on days. It says referring to Maiser Shani, Libi Artu Mi Menu Batame. So you're not allowed to destroy and consume Maiser. So you wouldn't you wouldn't be allowed to burn it and use it for its fuel value, but Avalatamavir Shemen Shall Truma. Truma if it's if it's if it's tame, you're allowed to burn it and use it as fuel. Okay. And then we we finished yesterday with the top of the Aindalam and Aleph suggesting that not only is there a ton of a shire in the second case of the Mishnah, there's a ton of a shire in the first case of the Mishnah, <coughs> when the Mishnah talks about the Chumrah of Truma and Bikurim over Miser, the Gemara says we could have offered two more things. A, is that Bikurim and Truma is every year, while Miser Shani only applies or well, it does not apply in year three and year six. It only applies in all the other years of the Shemitah cycle. So that's another Chumrah that Truma and Bikurim have over Miser. And the other Chumrah is that Miser, you can be Paita. Bikurim and Truma, you can't be Paita. So since there's extra, there's items in the Mishnah that that should have been on the list that weren't, it shows us that the Talmud might have left off the other item. And the other item is the item that the Sukkah started with, the Shiloh that was asked to have is, uh, is someone who's tame allowed, I'm sorry, is someone who's an oral, is someone who's an oral allowed to eat miser? We tried to bring a riot from the fact that the brasha doesn't list this as a chumrah between truma and bikurma for miser. So it must be that miser also cannot be eaten by an oral. But Dr. Gemara, a ton of shire. It's, it's possible that the Tana, when he was listing off the chumras of truma and bikurma for miser, he left them out. So including leaving out that an oral is a lot of miser, he left out other things as well. 
that miser is not like every year of the Shemitah cycle, and miser, you can be poida, Mashenk and Truma, and before. Shemamina. So now we're up to the second line, right on the top of the Ayin Dalit Amr Al. And the Gemara says as follows Toshma. They made a bris, and unfortunately, they didn't cut all the skin up. So the bris is not complete. Therefore, So this is a claraya. You have someone who's an oral because the mila was not complete. And just like the Brisa lists off that such a person cannot eat truma, pesach, and kachim, it also lists off that it can eat miser. So this is like a slam dunk. We have a Porsche Brisa that says that an oro will not eat mice. Zog to you know there's many different types of mice. Oh, thank you so much. My love, mice dogon. Let's suggest that we're talking about mice dogon, which is mice shani. And you have a chloriraya that someone who's an oro may not eat mice shani. So Zog to Gemara, no. Look, mice behema. Maybe it's referring to mice behema. We'll talk to Gemara. Maisha Behema. It can't be Maisha Behema because Hainu Kachim. The rice already lists off Kachim as an item that cannot be eaten by an Oro. So why would it need to mention Maisha Behema again? Zok Gemara, if that's a Kasha, Ulutameich, Mi Loit Nan Pesach, guess what? One of the items mentioned in the rice is Pesach. Pesach is a carbon Pesach, the Katani Kachim. So you see the rice has no problem mentioning Kachim in general and then itemizing specific carbonos. So why can't you say that Meisher, be- Meisher does not mean Meisher Dogon, maybe Meisher means Meisher Behema, and Meisher Behema indeed cannot be eaten by the Oral. Dr. Gamar, Bishon on Pesach Kachim Trichi. I have a good explanation why the Tana would have itemized the carbon Pesach, even though, even though the Tana already listed off all Kachim as things that cannot be eaten by an Oral. Morning. The Tana Pesach, if it would have only quoted Pesach, I would have said, if the Tana would have only listed carbon Pesach, we wouldn't have known automatically that all Kachim could not be eaten by an Oro. Because I would have thought that with carbon Pesach, the Torah says explicitly an Oro can't eat it. So who said that an Oro can't eat other Kachim? Our Kachim ain't Malloy. So the Torah, to the Bryce had to specifically list off Kachim. But the Eton the Kachim, and if the Bryce would have only said Kachim and wouldn't have listed off individually the carbon Pesach, have a mean my Kachim Pesach. I would have thought that when the Tana said Kachim, he really only means the carbon Pesach. So therefore, the Tana wrote both the word Kachim as well as Pesach to tell us that Kachim includes all the other carbonists that are not a carbon Pesach, including Maisha Behema. So Maisha Behema Lomeli, why would I need the Bryce to tell me that Maisha Behema cannot be eaten by your oral? Why would I expect it to be different than any other carbonists? So the Bach helped us a little bit. The Bach sticks in the word Vidilma Maisha <coughs> Maybe it's not referring to Maisha Shani, which is what our discussion is about. Maybe it's referring to Maisha Rishon. Now, Maisha Rishon, why should Maisha Rishon be any different? Why would you suggest that if Maisha uh, Shani, you want to say, can be eaten by an oral? But Maisha Rishon is different. Why would Maisha Rishon be different? We're at Mary, because there's a sheet of her mayor, the Omar Maisha Rishon also Lazar. Reb Meir has a sheet of siyachid that holds that a Yisrael may not eat maiser rishon. Everybody else holds that a Yisrael could eat maiser rishon. But Reb Meir has a sheet that he can't eat maiser rishon. So maybe the same way Reb Meir holds that an oral can eat, that, that a that a czar cannot eat maiser rishon. So maybe an oral cannot either eat maiser rishon. But we still don't have a conclusive raya in regards to maiser shen. There's actually a third type of maiser that we all know about called maiser ksofim. There's actually a big shayla in the Rishonim if Maisha Ksofim is the Raisa or if it's just a minik. There are those who learn it's just a minik, and there are those who learn that you have to give it no matter what. Maisha Ksofim is giving 10% of your money. It's a dakar. Oh, oh, oh. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's also, there are those who hold it's not a chiv. It's only an Indian, A. And B is, and even those who hold you have to give Maisha, it's net, 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 net. After your living expenses, after your after your 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 vital living expenses. So let's say it costs in Toronto minimum of one hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year to survive, and you make one hundred and fifty thousand. You're not mukhiyah to your maizer. 
But if you, you your minimum to survive is 180 and you make 360, yeah, so then you have to give my suksafim of the remaining 180, of what's remaining over and above religion success. Based on that formula, maybe a handful of people are mukhiv in my suksafim. So the next time you don't give my suksafim, I'm not here to corrupt anybody. The next time you don't give my suksafim, don't eat yourself up over it. Um, you, you can even ask the rope. But I, I, would, I would suggest you ask the rope. But you'll probably be told that my suksafim applies to money that's over and above what your minimal living expenses are. The problem with what you're saying is that even if a person is not required to give money uh, miser because his living expenses are only covered by his by his budget or whatever it is, his budget is only covered by his income, um, eventually a person starts accumulating some assets, right? And then he's never given to look, even though he's got a million dollars in his bank. Even though when How is it possible bank. that you accumulated assets if you didn't have more than your living expenses? Because your assets increase. Let's say you buy a house, your, your, your assets are increasing. Right. So if your assets increase, then your income will increase. Yeah. Why not? There's yeah. rental income. Yeah. There's, 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 a person can have assets. He can be house rich and income poor. So I want to tell you something. And that's a problem. I want to I mean, tell you that, something. That, that, unlike that unlike our secular governments who are looking for ways to tax our, our, our the, there are governments that are looking to tax just a wealth tax for people who have a certain amount of net. I don't, I don't think you ever find anywhere in the Torah where the Torah makes you give away part of your carrot. Even my Shabbat, the new my Shabbat that's born, you have to, the new animals that are born, you give my Shabbat. But the, nowhere is there is is there just a a a, a, a awesome well, tax? Well, I'm just showing right. you that a person can have a million or two million dollars, right? And he's never given tzedakah. Well, I didn't say they don't have to give I said they don't give myself tzedakah. They still have some tzedakah. Okay. And okay. even if you're not making enough money to cover your expenses, there's a mitzvah of tzedakah. But the question is, my tzedakah. Is there a chiyuv of tzedakah? I don't know. We'd have to ask the rabbi about that. Yeah. I don't know. But the but my sukhsafim is 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 a shaila. Are those holes you have to give no matter what? Okay. So you're making me a little bit nervous, but we should have a talk about the difference between equity on the balance sheet and cash on the income statement. <laughs> you notice that you notice how big they are. So the balance sheet is not relevant, it's the income statement that gets taxed. You notice how big I left my phone at home. Very good, very good. We'll have it live, a live conversation. Now we know why he's talking. You can see everything. No, he can't see you. Me, he can't. I, see I'm going to fix that. <laughs> okay, now I can see you. Okay, zok the helig gemor vayter. Zok the So we're still on the hunt to find some type of raya as to whether or not an oro is allowed to eat meisher sheni. So we had a close call now because we had a brisa that referred explicitly to Miser and said that an oral may not eat it, but the Gemara deflected and said it's referring to Miser Misha. So let's try another riot. Toshma, Midetani Rabchia Bairav Midifti, oral Usr Vishte Misers. An oral is Usr in two Misers. Which are the two? My love, Echad Miser Dogan, Echad Miser Behema. And then once again, you have a riot that Miser may not be eaten by oral. Dr. Gemara, you don't have a raya. Hachanami be Maishar Isha. The two Maishras that we're talking about in an oral Kanit is Maishar Behema and Maishar Isha for Reb Meir. And it's going to come to Reb Meir who has a Chumra by Maishar Isha that it's Asal Zoram. So who didn't, we can argue that he would hold that it's Asar for an oral to eat Maishar. Toshma. Oinein Asar be Maishar and Oinein may not eat Maishar. It says, Le'achalti be Oinein imenem. Umuter be Truma. But an Oinein is allowed to eat Truma. Uba para, and the, the oinen is allowed to be Isaac in paradum, which is quite interesting because paradum is sort of like creating a carbon. And we all know that an oinen is not allowed to be Isaac in a carbon. Uh, a coin who's an oinen does not do avoid a coin gadol, but a regular coin does not do avoid a. So you see that paraduma is different. There are those who learn paraduma is with the kabayas, it's not, it's not kachim. There's those who say there's special, there's special exclusion to paraduma, but it's, a, it's an anomaly that an onion is allowed to be Isaac in the, in the paraduma. Tfulyoim. A tfulyoim we discussed is someone who has toiled for whatever tumma he has, and he only has to wait until the evening arrives for him to be completely tahar. So a tfulyoim is also a truma. He may not eat truma. 
right? This once again is 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 uh, presented in the very first Mishnah in Shas that the guy one one is evening one may want to say Krishna shall harvest and the Kaihanam go to eat their truma. Why? Because they're tfulyoyim in the evening they're discharged. Umutar bepara at tfulyoyim is allowed to be oisik in the paraduma, right? We already said that they bedaf can make the person who's oisik in the paraduma into a tfulyoyim. Uva meiser and uh, uh, one second. Umutar bepara uva meiser. And the mut at full yoim is allowed to eat mice. Mechusik Yipurim. Mechusik Yipurim is someone who, after he waits till the evening, he asks her bonus that he has to bring. There are certain people who become tame that have to bring a carbon as the final discharge to their toma, such as a yoiledes, right? Even after she toivels and she, and she waits the time period of the main toma of Taira, the next day she brings carbonus, and only after she brings those carbonus will she be allowed to eat kachim. Or Azov, who saw three reyes, has to bring a carbon. The carbon that he brings is first he toivels, then he waits for the nightfall, and he still can't eat, he still cannot eat kachim until the next morning where he brings his carbonus. So Mechusikipurim, also Bepara, he's not allowed to be Isaac in the Paraduma, Umutu Bertruma, but a Mechusikipurim can eat truma, like we said. The, the coin only has to wait until the evening, right? He only needs Harab Shemesh, but he doesn't have to wait until he brings the Kabbalah the next day. Uba Meiser and a Mechusha Kippurim is a lot of Meiser. Frank the Gemara, if you hold, if you hold that an oral is a lot of Meiser, a Misa, Nisni, another item that should have been mentioned in this Brisa was oral also Betuma, Umutar Bepar, Uba Meiser, right? What does it say over here? It says, it, it says what Allah the Aydin is re, re, in respect to Meiser, Truman, and Para, what Allah of Tfulyoim is in respect to Meiser and Truman and Para. So they talk about a, a Mechusha Kippurim in respect to Meiser, Truman, and Para. Why didn't it also pick Oral in respect to Meiser, Truman, and Para? LMI, LMI, it must be that this time I hold that they all have the same Allah, the same way the Oral is also in Truman. And the oral is also bepara. The oral is also also a miser. And that's why I didn't list it. So once again, we have a raya that an oral is also to eat miser. Zok to Gemara, like we said a couple of blot ago. Hi Tana, the Vegar Bekivihi. We're asking according to the Chachamim, who learned that an oral may not eat, who learns that an oral may not eat truma from the Zeir Shav of Toisha Vesachir by Pesach to Toisha Vesachir by Truma. Which, which is also imported from Pesach, because Tosh Vesachar is extra by Pesach. But if you learn it the way Rabbi Kiva learns it, from Ish Ish, where the extra Ish Ish is Marba, even in oral, cannot eat Truma, well, in that list, covered by Ish Ish, include the Tomei as well. And therefore, Rabbi Kiva held that an oral has the status of a Tomei, and that's why an oral may not eat, uh, may not eat Truma. So if that's the case, high tani the bear bekivihi the mar bele la oral ketamik who holds orals like a tamik the tanya bekivai mer ishish the rabbi says oral and since he holds an oral is like a tamik he would agree that an oral could not eat meiser but we're asking according to the other sheet is according to Rabbi Lazar may a may an oral eat meiser so our shaila is still a shaila. Frank the Gemara uman tana the polig alayi rabbi kiva who is a tana. That argues on Rabbi Kiva and holds that that an oral might be allowed to eat miser. Zok the Gemara, Tana the Rabbi Yosef Avavli. It's the Tana Kama who argues on Rabbi Yosef Avavli, which is how Rashi learns. It's the Tana that argues on Rabbi Yosef Avavli. So let's see this shayt. The Tanya we learned: Sreifas Oynen Umechusikipurim. Kshayra. The Sreifa means the person who burns the uh, who burns the paradum. If an onion burns it, or if a machusa kippur burns it, it's going to be a kosher paradum. Rabbi Yosef of Avli Yomer, Rabbi Yosef of Avli says, oral usher. One second, I'm, I'm missing this. I mean, onion kshayra, machusa kippur psuma. So you might wonder to yourself, there's not one word here mentioned about Meiser, 
and there's not one word mentioned here about Arla. So how do you see anything related to our Shiloh? So this is what Rashi says. Zokt Rashi, Hachi Garcinon b'Tesefta Shreifus Oynin Amuchusa Kipurim Kshera Yosef Ababel Yoimer Oynin Kshera Amuchusa Kipurim Kshuva Zokt Rashi the Chivon the Amuchusa Maisa who since he's a Amuchusa Maisa why is he Amuchusa Maisa because we, in order for his tumor to be completely discharged Karbanos need to be brought that's what Amuchusa Kipur means by definition so Adai in Tumah Law we say that there's still Tumah upon this person because he still needs to bring the kabbalas and therefore we like karini be tahar we don't consider him to be tahar and that's why that's why um rabbi yosef babli says that a mechusa kippur is tula why is a mechusa kippur tula because he's not completely tar because it's still mechusa maizah so um oh, actually I, I i should have learned the previous rashi hachi gashin and tana the yosef babli Tanakama the Yosef Ababli, the Tanakama that argued on your base of Ababla, what does your base of Ababli say? He says, the base of Ababli we just quoted says, Machusa Kapur Mesula, but the Tanakama says, Machusa Kapur Meskashir Bapar. The Tanakama holds that Machusa Kapur, someone who didn't yet bring his carbonates to completely discharge his Tumma, he is allowed to be Isaac in the Paraduma. Bahamas Nisa, do Kim the Karabakiba, and the Bryce a moment ago, that we still down like Rabakiba. To say that an oral is like a tome, katani, that same Bryce says, Mukhusakipurim, hustle the part. So we just the raya was from the earlier Bryce. In the earlier Bryce, it says that Mukhusakipurim may not may not be Isaac with the Paraduma. And our deek was, why didn't that Bryce also mention that there's a difference between Tum and Miser, Lagabi or Lagabi and oral eating it? And we said Elamai must be that an oral cannot eat Miser. The Gemara said that's going to according to Rabbi Kiva, who also holds that not only may an oral not eat miser, um, not, not, not only may an oral not be Isaac in the Paraduma, a Mechusa Kippurim as well cannot eat the Paraduma. So what's the connection? Here's the answer. The, the, the Pollock, a Mechusa Kippurim, the same way there's a Machlaikis, Tanoyim, that we see right over here, whether or not a Mechusa Kippurim is allowed to be Isaac in the Paraduma, because it's considered Mechusa Misa. E or you can also argue the e polygnami aleba or loyal. You can say that what's the reason why a mechusar maisa? What's the reason why a a mechusar kipurim cannot be oisik in the paraduma? Because it's missing something. Well, guess what? An oral is also mechusar maisa. He's missing finishing up the bris. So therefore, Rashi says we see for sure that there is a machlokes between this brisa and the earlier brisa because the earlier brisa says that a mechusar kipurim is also bepara. Like Rabbi Yosef Abli says, but the Tanakhama says, The reason for it is because it's Mechusa Maisa. Well, let's compare oral to Mechusa Kippurim. And just like Mechusa Kippurim is Mechusa Maisa, so Rabbi Yosef Abli and the earlier Brisa that we're attributing to Rabbi Kiva will hold that an oral is also Mechusa Maisa and he cannot eat Maisa. But, but um, the Tanakhama would hold that the Mechusa Maisa is not a problem. So it's a little bit of a stretch. No, no, because the earlier case was discussing somebody who they just they missed some skin. But whether or not an oral is someone who can't have a bris is, is the subject of a machloikis rashi and tosis. Rashi, it's called an oral. Yeah, because it, it's a physical. There's something physically that has to get done. It's not. It's not just like a. It's not like a, a, a spiritual thing. This there's something's got to actually get done. Right? So you might ask, just because a mechusa ma'isa can't be Isaac in the paraduma, as a mechusa kapurim, so it's still a stretch. It's still a stretch to oral, to an oral gavim ma'isa. So in fact, that's Toysus is kasha. You look at Toysus. Toysus asks. Toysus asks um, the kasha l'ri the ma'in yin zeh eitzel zeh the mishum the mesher the mechusa kapurim yachshir ba'oral. Just because he allows the Mechusa Kippurim to be Isaac in the Paraduma, that's a reason why he would allow an oral. It's two different things, right? That's that Toysus Gasha. Toysus ends up having to stick with this chat because Toysus offers a chat where it changed the whole Girsa and it 
in, and he learned that the Brayser is specifically discussing an oral. So it's, it's, it's explicit that there's a machoik by an oral by Meiser. The problem is Toshi says that's impossible, that his Pshat is impossible. Because so is also <laughs> so be, because of that, we have to buy with Rashi. And the, the analogy is that you know there's a machoik by Mechusik before him. So let's say this, the machoik is about whether a machos or Meiser prevents you from being Isaac in a paraduma. And an oral is also machos or Meiser, so it should follow the same logic. Okay, when you're speaking about Aurelus, you can stretch it a little bit. Okay. I'm sorry, I couldn't I couldn't hold back over here. I, I want you to know that the Bosa Erla is priceless, is priceless skin. It's actually the best type of skin to use for plastic surgery is 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 is, is skin from the Erla. It's a very, very valuable skin. I'm sorry. They, they they use it. They do use it for plastic surgery. It's very very good for reconstruction because it's so soft and so pliable. <laughs> okay, Kavalti. Okay, Zog the head of the Gemara Vaiter. Very good. No, but they do use it for surgery. It's it's actually it happens to be very very valuable. What do you mean they, they'll, if they need to do something? Yeah, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what I'm referring to specifically. We learned earlier that there's a condition called hypospadias. Hypospadias is, is, if the, if the, is if the canal that carries the urine doesn't go all the way to the end, it stops halfway and then comes out the side. That's a child of a Khrushchev, right? So when they repair that, they have to use, they have to use foreskin. Because it has to be a soft skin that will stretch and grow with the with the with the child when the child grows, and because of that, because of that, they tell a child who's hypospadias they tell the parents not to give the child a bris because they need that for the surgery, which is done after eight days. So what do they do? What do they do? Do they give them a bris? So yeah, the, the expert mayalim are able to do a bris and halachically make the child ois oral. Yet still leave them enough to work with. Why can't they make a bris and then save the foreskin? I guess you can't, but sometimes they do the bris by the surgery. Sometimes I'll call the moil to the surgery and do the bris there. But they're, I mean, I'm not a moil, so I don't know these things, and I can't even delve into it because it makes me nauseous. Okay, so to the Tanya. The Tanya we learned. Shreifas oini. Umachosukipur. Shreifas oini. Umachosukipur. Shreifas oini. Umachosukipur. Shreifas oini. Umachosukipur. Shreifas oini. So you see this machlokes if something's a machos or maisa if it's kosher or pasul to be able to be oisik in the parduma. But after bitzak sover, bitzak also holds. So now we're already coming to a little bit of a maskana about our shaila whether or not an oral is allowed to be sheni. But after bitzak sover, bitzak also holds that an oral also be maisa and oral may not eat maisa sheni. Don't make bitzak minayin la oral should also be maisa sheni. How do we know that an oral may not eat maisa sheni? Um, I, I stuck in my shashani. It's also a miser. Nemar mi menu ba miser. It says mi menu ba miser. It says three times mi menu. Now we're going to learn about them. Lo echalti ba oini mi menu. I didn't eat it when I was an oinim. Well, in a sato mi menu ba mais. I didn't give it from mais. Lo echalti ba oini mi menu ba mais. I forgot the third one. There's, there's, there's a third There's a third clause. Does anybody have the psukim on the side of the gemar? It says lo echalti ba oini mi menu ba oini mi menu ba no, so something with tummy. So those are the three things, right? So it says me menu by miser. It says actually three times me menu by miser. Me nemar me menu by pesach, but it says me menu by pesach. And we learn mami menu ha'amar by pesach oral alshibon, just like the word me menu that that it says by pesach. It's referring to the carbon pesach where an oral may not eat. I have a menu ha'amar by miser oral alshibon. So we can have a gzair shava. From one of the times, one of the three times it says me menu by carbon pesach, to one of the three times it says me menu by miser, and that's going to teach us that a oro may not eat miser. Zakkar mufni, you have to say that the word me menu is extra. The lay mufni, if it wasn't extra, ikalamifrak, I could slug up the gzera shava. Just because by carbon pesach an oro can't eat it, that's not a riot that miser cannot be eaten by an oro. Because Mala Pesach, Shekin Chayov and Olav Mishum Pigol, the Nicer Vidame. Kachim has many more Chomers than Meiser. So I can understand why an Oro cannot eat a carbon base. But but Mehechatesim Meiser, Mehechatesim Meiser cannot be eaten by an Oro. 
So therefore, we have to say that this Gzer Shav of Mimenu Mimenu has got to be F. Look, Gemara, you're right. I agree. La'ayaf no yemukmi. But then the question is, my mukmi. Which of these Mimenus are in fact redundant? Amar Rav Amar Bithok, Tlasa Mimenu Ksivim Pesach. It says three times Mimenu by Pesach. It says, 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 it and this is a Moshe Mimenu at Yom Ashlishi, but let's win at Yom Ashlishi and Beish Yisar. That's, I don't know the exact Musach of the Pasach, but those are the three times it says Mimenu. So we learned Chad Lugufei, one of the Mimenu is just to tell you Pashim Jah. Now we're talking about the Karpen Pesach. The Chad Lugzeri Shava, one Mimenu by Karpen Pesach is extra for this Gzeri Shava because we want to teach the Halacha from Pesach to Meiser that a oral may not eat it. The Chad and the third one is Laman the Omar Ba Kosev Litin Lecha Say Acher Loisas. We want to give you an essay after the Loisas. In other words, we want to make we want to make the 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 Noiser into a Lav Hanid Klase. So that it says Veloisas Sirim Menu Ad Boiker. That's the Lav. And then by Noiser Menu Ba Ishi Sorif is the Say making it into a Lav Hanid Klase. So since it had to say by Noiser. Layom Ashlishi, it Agav Orcha sticks in the word Mimenu. I did Siv Noiser, Siv Nami Mimenu. That's that's according to the Madam who learned that it's just a lava minute let's say. But there's people who learn a special limud from the Pasha of the Hanoisi Mimenu. Lamanda Amr Litan Lai Biker Shani Lisri Fasai. It says Vanoisi Mimenu at Biker Bay Shisrai, and we learn that it doesn't mean the next morning. So say your night you have your carbon face up, but noise you went in the biker, it doesn't mean the first day of Pesach you burn it, because we already know it says well, it's a at biker. So obviously you're holding back tomorrow morning. So all it had to say was but noise you menu, but you serve. Why does it have a noise menu la biker? It says an extra la biker. From there we learn that you now want to burn the noise are on the first day of Pesach, rather you have to wait for Khalamoy. That's how they learn from this the noise menu at biker. So therefore, he uses the Mimenu, since anyway, it has to tell you this new halacha, that the noiser of the carbon Pesach isn't burnt on the first day of Pesach, rather it's burnt on the first day of Chalamoid, so it throws in the word Mimenu. I did the Boiker, Sivnami Mimenu. So those are the three times it says Mimenu by Pesach, and we've determined that one of the Mimenus is extra for this Kzer Shabbat to Meiser. Zog to Gemara, what about Meiser? Tlasa Mimenu Kzir of the Meiser. It also says three times Mimenu by Meiser, like we just discussed. Right? So three mimenu. Chad lugufe. One is to tell us that we're talking about ma'aser. The chad the Rabbi Vola Merbiyochanan, who told us yesterday, mimenu davke from ma'aser, you're not allowed to burn and consume it when it's tame. But truma, you are allowed to burn. As a matter of fact, you're supposed to burn truma tamei and use it for fuel. So that was the Rabbi Vola Merbiyochanan that I. Pointed out yesterday, we need to remember, we needed to remember it because it's now being referred to today. And the third time it says Mimenu is to teach us the Kiddush that Rish Lakish taught us. How do you know that if you have Mashin that's Tomei, although you know that you're not allowed to burn it for fuel, you're allowed to smear it and use it as a moisturizer? Shanemar, because the Pasuk says by Meiser, I didn't give it to a mace, and we're Medai. Who the Lonisati? I didn't use the oil for a function on the mace, but I, for that identical function, I did use it for a chai. So let's think what that is. Can a mace eat? A mace cannot eat. So we're definitely not talking about a chila. So what use can you have for oil that will be equally effective for a live as a dead person? The same way you could smear a live person's skin, with oil, you can smear a dead person's skin. So it must be that it's telling us that that you're allowed to smear oil on your skin, but you're not allowed to smear oil on a mace. So those are the three reasons for the three mimenus. Frank the Gemara, if each of the three mimenus by Meister is not available, and you only have a mimenu available by Kerpen Pesach, you don't have a Gzer Shava that's Mufna on both sides. Mask of Lamar um, I'm, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead of myself. Maybe what it says about the Satan Mendel Mace, it doesn't mean a function like shimmering it for oil. 
because there's other things that you can use mice for that will be equally uh, uh, that will be equally effective. It's an equal function for live people and dead people. And that is to liquidate it and use it for something else, such as by a mace buying orinatechuchim, which would be comparable to a person to sell, to buy anything he wants with it. So maybe that's what it's referring to. It says, means using it itself for the mace not using something that you liquidated it for. So therefore, we know it's speaking about Sikha. It says, So we're going to compare the consumption of Nasati to the consumption of Achalti. Just like Achila is not liquidating it, it's actually consuming the actual product. It's talking about a consumption that you're consuming the actual product. So that's why we darshan that it's referring to oil. So you're allowed to smear yourself with oil, but you're not allowed to sell the mice or use it for something else. So Zoktikum are fine. So we know that all of the three mimenus by mice are used, but only two of the mimenus by carbon Pesach is used. Therefore, Zoktikum are vakate mukta mitzad we only have an extra word by carbon Pesach. We don't have the extra mimenu by Maishim. If you all that if even one side is extra, you could learn the Gzir Shava and you can't slug it up with a logical argument. But if you hold that, if, if it's not Mukta Mishnah's Todd, you can slug it up with an argument. Michael Mamer, I have a very good argument to say that just because the carbon Pesach may not be eaten by an oral, Maishim, which is much more Kuladik, who said that cannot be eaten by an oral? Zokt Gemara, because of that, we have to clear away one of the limudim that we used one of the mimenus for by Maishu. So who's going to be the victim? Rabbi Vo. Zokt Gemara, hach, Rabbi Vo, mid Rav Nachman, Omer Rabba, bar We won't use the mimenu to teach you that by truma, you're allowed to burn it and use it as fuel. We won't learn that from mimenu. So now we have that mimenu extra to learn the Xer Shoba from Pesach to Maishu, that an oral monotic Maishu. So how are we going to know that Truma, you're allowed to burn and use it as fuel. The Amar of Nachman, Amar Rabbi Baruch Hu, my dechsev. It says, "Vani, he need the tzadik lecha es mishmeres truma isoy." I gave you to watch two types of trumas. Truma isoy is plural. The shtei truma is a cost of a daber. Achas truma tora, v'achas truma tmeya. V'amar Rechmona lecha shalachate nasati lecha. I gave you side truma tahira and side truma tmeya. For what purpose did Hakadosh Baruch Hu give the koyin truma tmeya? Must be lasaka tachach stavshilach. It must be that you can use it for fuel. So since we have another makar for that, mimenu is extra, and we have exer shavu mimenu mimenu. So it seems like the maskana of our gemara is that from the exer shavu mimenu mimenu, we learn that not only may an oral not eat from the carbon pesach, an oral may also not eat from uh, from ice. Yes. Um, I can't because we don't have internet access in that room, so, the, the, so that's not connectable. Yeah, it, it's tough because there's someone who learns here later on that shuts it off, but doesn't turn it back on when he leaves, obviously. Because if he did, it would be on now. So we'll have to deal with that. Okay, talk to more about it. How do we know? How do we know that a tome may not eat trumo? Because that's what this is going back to the Mishnah at the beginning of the prayer. It says a tome may not eat trumo. It says, Ish Ish, Mizera Aharon, Bhutsaru Aizov. So this is the list of the Kohanim who are not allowed to eat Truma. And we learn, what it, it, it says, and we learn there in oral as well, according to Rabbi Kiva, so what type of, what type of Matnas Kuna are, is this Pasuk referring to when it says that this, this, this list of people like the Tmeim may not eat it? Zog to Gemara, it must be what's equal to all Zahar Shalarin. It must be referring to truma because truma is the only item that every kain or kohenis can eat. Frank the who said, maybe it's referring to the chaz of which may also be eaten by female kayanim. We learned earlier that if she went and got married to Yisrael and she lost the rights to eat truma and eat the chaz of and then her husband dies and she goes back to her father's household, although she can she can, can go back, she can resume to eat truma, she can no longer eat the chaz of so Chaz of is not in all Zer Shalar. Zakhtamar, Truma Nami, Eina Bechalola. Truma also, Halolo loses that right. 
So Kimura Halolo loves Zarid Aaron. That's not called Zarid Aaron. So therefore, Truma is the only thing that applies to all the Zaraha. Prekimura Umimai, the high Adasher Yitar. It says that the Koyan, I mean, not in Truma until he's Betahar himself. How do we know Betahar himself means Adi Ikahar of Shemesh? Ema Adamaisi Kapara. Maybe the Pazak, when the Pazak is Adasher Yitar, means the final Kapara of of Mechusha Kapurma, of his carbon. But if he just had Har of Shemesh, because normally they would toibel, and then they would wait till night fall, and the next morning they would bring their carbonus. Maybe when it says that the Shayitra in this Pazak, it means that the Kohen can eat Truma until he brings their carbonus. So, that's not logic. The Tanya, the Tanya Deve Rabbi Shmuel, Bezov Bashte Reyes, Uf Mitzayim Muskar Kosan Tadaber. When the Torah says in this Pazak that we just quoted, Ishish Ashiyat Surua, Ishish Mizera Haring, Ashiyat Surua Izov, what type of tzerua and what type of zov? It's the type of tzerua that does not need to bring a carbon, meaning he was only muskar, he was locked up, but he wasn't mukhlet yet. He wasn't, he wasn't determined that he was a vada, that he was a vada in the And a zov is who does not need to bring a carbon. So it's speaking about the puzzle that says adasher yitar is speaking about somebody who doesn't need to bring a carbon. How do we know? Dumya the tummy nefesh, because one of the items in the list who cannot eat room is a tummy nefesh. Someone who's tummy because he touched a mace, he doesn't need a carbon. He just becomes tar after he gets spritzed and then he tables at the last day on day seven and then at, in the evening he can eat. So therefore, ma tamei nefesh alav bakaparuhu hani nami dalav b'nei kaparim. So the pasuk that says adash or yitar he may not eat truma is referring to somebody who doesn't have to bring a carbon the next day. Therefore, we say that in order to eat truma you don't have to bring a carbon the next day. You become tar as soon as you have of shemesh, even though you have to bring a carbon tomorrow. Who said that that's how you learn the Pazak? The Pazak says, Adashi Yitar means until nightfall. That's only by a person who doesn't have to bring a carbon, like all of the people listed in that Pazak. But if he's a Barkapur, for instance, he's becoming Tar from Ziva, or he's coming Tar from Saras, where he wouldn't interview the carbon, which we specifically said the Pazak is not referring to, maybe Adamaisi Kapara. Maybe that kind, in fact, wouldn't be able to eat truma until he brought the carbon the next morning. Visu, I'm going to ask you another question. How did it says in the pasuk, Toval the Allah oichel b'maiser. When you toivel, right away you can eat maiser. So unlike the coin who has to wait for harem shemesh, a coin a coin that's young can't eat truma, but maiser can be eaten once you toivel, even before nightfall. Harem shemesh, if you had harem shemesh, then we say oichel b'truma, and heavy kapara. Tomorrow morning, when you bring your carbon, then oichel b'kachim, you can even eat kachim. Frankly, how do we know that? How do we know that the koyin can eat truma by harab shemesh? Maybe a koyin who requires a carbon has to wait till the next day. The pasuk that says that harab shemesh is enough is speaking by somebody who didn't need to bring a carbon. But how do we know if someone didn't need to bring a carbon, he would be able to eat truma before he brought the carbon? Because there's three psukim. Ksiv v'lo yoichel muna kachim. Kim Rachat the Sari Bamayim, Harachat Tar. It said you can't eat Kachim, and we learned we're going to see, see this is referring to Meiser, um, and which tells you that the moment you go to the mikveh, you can already eat Meiser, which means you don't need any hair of Shemesh. The Tfila right away makes you allowed to eat Meiser. There's another puzzle that we just quoted by Truma that says, When can you eat Truma? Once the sun goes down, the day you toil. And the third pasuk says, "Uchsev a chipper ale a koyin v'teira." The koyin has to be mechaber, meaning you have to bring the kerbonis, and then you tar. So the question is, we have a three-way steer between psukim. Is it tefila? Is it harab shemesh? Or is it bringing the kerbonis? Hakeitza. It must be kan lemaiser. When the pasuk says tefila is enough, it's referring to maiser. Kan la truma. When it says you need harab shemesh, it's referring to truma. And kan when it says you need the kerbonis, is the kachim. Prekemor ve'epechano. Maybe truma you can eat the moment you come out of the mikvah. Maybe Maiser, you have to wait for Harab Shemesh. So it's more, no, Mistaber Truma Dita. Truma is more Hummer, and therefore Truma should need nightfall. Why? Shekane Machpaz. Remember, we already learned yesterday what Machpaz was. Um, does anybody remember what it was? I don't. So we're going to go back and we're going to quickly look and see what Rashi said Machpaz was. I'm sorry? A Misha means if you eat it when you're Tomei. Chaymesh means if a Zor eats it, he has to be a what was the other one? Mm-hmm. Pigeon, you cannot be part of the truma. And Zarim, it's also a Zarim. Okay, and we learned that's by Chatishir, right? So truma has a Chumrah, which Maishir doesn't have. So therefore, it should be logical to say that truma, you'd have to wait until nightfall. 
Zok to Gemara, Zok to Gemara, Adar Abba, Maish Odiva, Shekin Hadas Tab, and Rashi here tells us on the spot what Hadas Tab is. Um, Rashi says it right over here. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Hadas Tab, Havas Mokon, Maish, you have to bring, you have to be this Maish, you got to bring it to your Shalim, Bidui, Asr Lo'inen, you know, an Oinen can eat Maish, you know, you know, you know, you know, to destroy it when it's Tamay, but Oichle, but Tumas Atzma, you like it. And we have a beer. How do you get that out of this code? So hey is Hava, Bal is Vidui, Samach is Osir Lainan, Tes is Tuma, Bez is beer, and all these things, all these chumas do not apply to Tuma. So if you are Afilahi Misa Dipa, the fact that Tuma has Misa, if you eat it when you're Tame, that's more chumar than anything else. And that's why we'll say that Truma needs Harab Shemesh, but the Pasuk that allows you to eat something right when you go to the mikveh is referring to Mais. Rabba Mabala Misa Dipa Nami Le Matsus Armik, you wouldn't be able to say that. Truma, that true that, that miser needs more than just a tefillah. Because Amr Kra the Pasuk says, Nefesh. It says nefesh that becomes tame. Ezu Dover, Shavuchal Nefesh Abo Imus and Miser. What item could be eaten by everybody, even by a shrill? It must be miser. So the Pasuk that says that after Tvila, you're tar, it says nefesh in that Pasuk as well. That's how we know that it must be referring to miser. In fact, the more Bakata Hanimili, Hechad Lav Bakarpar. Once again, I have the same question. Maybe when the Pasuk says that Truma you can eat at nightfall, that's speaking if this coin didn't need a kapara. If the, if the coin needed a carbon, for instance, he was coming out of the Ziba or coming out of Taras, maybe Adamai see kapara. Maybe even to eat Truma, you have to wait till it brings a carbon the next day. Um, Rabbi, for that, we have another answer. There's two Pasukim that are mentioned in Pasha's Tazriya by your letters. It says she's Tame Ad Maloy Shimei Tahara. Which tells us, even Shemalu Yomea Tahara, the moment she's finished her counting and she had Harab Shemesh of her, of, of her 40 days or of her 80 days, she's tar without any carbon being brought. But then the Pazak says later, Then it says she's only tar after she brings a carbon. So by your lettuce itself, there's a stira. Is she become, does she become tar at the end of the day, at the, at the end of her sphere, or does she have to? Wait until she brings the carbonus. When the Pasuk says, it was referring to Truma. Truma you can eat once her counting is over, meaning once she has Harab Shemesh. But when it says she only has a kapar, she only tar after the carbonus, that's the Kachim. In order to eat Kachim, she has to wait. So now we have a good riot. Why don't we say that Adrab, maybe you can eat a carbon after you have Harab Shemesh. And to eat Truma, it's even more Chomer, you got to wait until the carbon is brought. So tomorrow, Mistaver Kodesh Homer, Kodesh is more Homer, Shekane Pankechs. We already learned what Pankechs is. Um, but I don't remember what Pigel, Noisar, the Carbon, uh, Meila, Kares, and Nosh Loyal, right? So you have all those Milas. Zok tomorrow, Adra, but Chuma Homer, Shekane Machbis, right? We had exactly this discussion before. Zok tomorrow, Hanak the Vision. Pankechs is more than Machbis. So Pankechs wins. It's like rock, paper, scissor. Pankechs wins. Pancakes always wins. If you have pancakes for breakfast, that takes the day. So therefore, so therefore, um, it's mistaken to say that in order to catch them, you have to wait till the next morning until you brought the kabbalas. Rav Amar Belei Hanach Nefishan, without this svar, that there's more chumash by kachim over truma. Lematus Amar, it's not logical to say, it's not possible to say that you can eat kabbalas and touch kabbalas before the tomorrow's tahira. Why? Because Amar Kra v'chipra ale akayim v'tahira. Everybody agrees there's some level of Tuma still left on this woman, right? Even if you want to learn that that Pasuk is referring to Truma. But if you have to wait, even for Truma, until the next morning, there's obviously some level of Tuma that's going to be on this woman until the next morning, until she brings a Karbanis. Mechlashi there's some level of Tuma. And if you're going to say that by Kachim, you already can eat it the night before, even before the Karbanis, the Pasuk says elsewhere, that a bosser of kachim that touches any type of tumma, any minimal level of tumma, you're not allowed to eat it. And if you're telling me there's a minimal level of tumma on her because she has to wait for tomorrow for the truma, well, then how could you possibly suggest that you can eat kachim the night before if there's some level of tumma on her, she's going to be retired to kachim. It must be that truma you're allowed to eat the night before, but for kachim you have to wait till the next day. Can you say that it's talking about truma over here? But Tanya, in the parsha of, of your lettuce, says, Dabra el Bnei Yisrael. Who are we talking to? Ainly el Bnei Yisrael. How do you know we're talking about a Giyaris, a Shivchem, a Shechveris, Minayin? How do you know we're speaking to anyone, even a Giyaris? Talmud Leimer Isha. 
So we saw good night the truma. If you if you think we're talking about truma, how would the Torah be speaking to a Gyarish and talk about their ability to truma? A Gyarish for sure can't be a kain, right? So how is it possible that we're talking about a Gyarish when we're talking about truma? So you can't say that the pasuk of Yeladis is referring to truma. So Gemara, we saw good night the truma Gyarish for shivcha benoyis mechal truma the new. What are you talking about? You have to say that that Pasha is referring to Truma as well. Because we have another Pasuk in the Pasha of Yeladis. And we dash in the Rabbis of Truma. So we know for sure the Torah in the Pasha of Tazria is talking about Truma as well. You have to say that the Pasuk is not all speaking about the same thing. We're, there are certain things in the Pasuk that are re- relative to everybody, like eating Kachim. And Truma applies only to those people who Truma applies to, which are the Kohanim. And that's where we'll stop, and what mission will be mamshech here tomorrow. The, the, I, I said over the story, you cannot be a giyaris and also be a kain. It's like you can't be a ger and also be a rabbi shainik. Like, you, know, you, know, you can't be a ger and a rabbi there's, there's this, there's, There was this guy who was a partner with a goy. They were, they were in the farming business. And one year, they had a horrible year. It messed. They had no, they had no yield. So they were going to starve to death. So they were discussing how we're going to deal with our personal finances. So the eaters, I'm just going to go around and chill, and I'll take my hand up, and I'll make a dollar from everybody, and I'll survive. So the guy says, can I come along? He says, you could, but I'm not sure how well you're going to do. So on the first day, the eat goes around, everyone gives him a dollar, the guy goes around, and no one gives him any money. So afterwards, the girl is all upset, the guy is all upset. He says, how are you talking? How are you talking now? So he says, listen, I'm one of them. You're not one of them. What do you want? So the next day, the, the guy comes around and says, I'm Jewish. And he totally gets a dollar from everybody, so he's very happy. But then he sees there's another guy going around getting five dollars from everybody. So he's got a chutzpah. So he asks him, what a chutzpah? How come he gets five and I only get one? Because he couldn't forget. So that's the move of the master. So he says, that guy's a gear. A gear we have special, we're specially warm to because we want to we want to be Macarv. So the next day he went around and says, I'm a gear. And he got five dollars from everybody. He was very excited. But then he sees another guy who's getting 20 from everybody. And he still can't forget. So he asked his friend, how come I got five and he's getting 20? So they said, oh, because he's an Einikel from Rebbe And people believe if you help out the Einikel from Rebbe you, you he pays you back, double, triple. So the next day, this guy goes around and says, I'm a ger, an Einikel from Rebbe Melech. <laughs> says, Mama, just Gemara. You cannot be a ger and be a kain. Um, Today is the two very big ger types. <laughs> there's, there's, there's two ger types. So the ger of Marami Rothenberg, who's the Rebbe of the Rosh, and he's the famous uh, Rishon who was who, in jail, in jail yeah. and even after he died, because he, he forbade anybody to bail out his body because he didn't want other people to be kidnapped. That's one shot. There's other versions of the story that the Rush simply couldn't bail out his revenue because he couldn't raise enough money. That's, mm-hmm. that's actually a version of the story that goes that way. But the Marami Rottenberg, he, one of the reasons why he was captured on his way running to Eretz Yisrael, he was moving to Eretz Yisrael, and he, and, and he, why did he leave? Because he, he saw that they burnt, they burnt, they burnt Svarim, they burnt Gemaris, they in Paris. So he left because of that. And he actually, one of the kidneys that we see on Tishabov is a kidney that the Marami Rottenberg wrote because of the anguish he saw when the tire was burnt. He wrote the name um, that's the right. Which got burned too. Down. That's the first. And the second yard today, today is a very big yard from Hanosa. Mati, today is a big school from Hanosa. Because it's the yard of Rabbi Nachem Mendel Merivinov. And Rabbi Nachem Mendel Merivinov, every day of his life, darshan a, 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 a Torah in the Parshish Hamon. Because he wanted to bring down Hashboyis of Parnosa into the world. So the, the Rabbi Nachem Mendel Merivinov always was darshan Parshish Hamon to bring down Hashboyis of Parnosa. And he was my spirit Parnosa to his whole generation. So I once asked the Rav, I need a school for Panosa. So the Rav didn't say she should get a job. What the Rav told me was I should, every day my wife should light a candle, a yard mm-hmm. candle at home. Not a yard candle. And, and she should say, Lilo Mishra is Rabbi Nacha Mendel, Ben Rabbi Yosef, or Rabbi Yosef, right? And I should say the Pashat Amon every day. Where's this? Where's this? Where's this? Where's this? My wife lights a candle. Let's put it this way. My wife has to light the candle. I have to say Pashas Amon. My wife lights the candle every day. I, I, I had a guy stay at my house, and he, he actually, the question is one time, seven candles, 